Hey, I wanted to show you what I picked up over the weekend from Amazon. It's this OLED display that works with my Arduino. Got it from the seller DIY Mall. You can get it from Adafruit. You can get it from Acrobotic. And it's a monochrome display, even though you can definitely see two colors. What's going on is that the top quarter is always yellow and the bottom three quarters are always blue. This is in case you want to make an interesting display like battery meter, wireless sensor on top and on bottom, uh, some Chinese proverb about anxiety. Well, that's strange. Uh, hooking it up is pretty simple. Uh, on the Nano, the pins A4 and A5 are designated for all uh, I squared C communication. So I have black and white. And then I got the 3.3 volt is purple and the gray is ground. And that just goes to the pins on top. You can see them better on the Amazon here. Uh, there's uh, voltage, ground, clock, and data. So that's the black and white. And that's all you need for hooking up an I squared C bus. Uh, software wise so this display uses a driver a chip called the SD SSD 1306 and there's a number of drivers for the Arduino that talk to the SSD 1306 the first one I'm going to talk about is Adafruit's library so um, you can buy your screen from Adafruit and you can use their library or you can buy your screen from anywhere and still use their library to install the library, if you have the latest Arduino IDE, there's this nifty uh, thing called Manage Libraries. And when you pull it up, it's going to check the internet and help you easily download a bunch of libraries that have been sort of vetted and, and all that stuff. So once you get it open, if you filter by SSD1306, you should see a number of libraries. See Adafruit. And Acrobatic, but let's install the Adafruit. I've already installed it. I'm not going to bore you with clicking install. For the Adafruit, you actually need two libraries. One is the SSD1306, uh, and then their base library, which is the Adafruit GFX library. You need to install them both. Once you have them both installed, you can come up here to examples. Examples from libraries, Adafruit SSD1306, blah, blah, blah. I have a 128 by 64. It's using the I squared C bus, not the SPI bus. So I'm going to load that. I have it loaded. Now, what happens if you just try to compile it straight away is that it will not work. Uh, the header file is designed for 128 by 32. And you have to go in here. Um, this isn't the right thing. You have to go in here and edit this file a couple lines down there's these three defines now it comes out of the box like this where 128 by 32 is defined right there so if you try to define in your source code or your make file your example project it'll warn you that you can only have one thing defined right here it's like hey you can only have it defined once so you have to come in here and comment this out uncomment that or now put this in your make file or project so you can change it more easily. Once you do that, there's one more thing. If you bought from Adafruit, it's fine. If you bought from DIY Mall or Acrobotics, well, I'm not sure about Acrobotics, but this line right here, this OX3C, it actually comes OX3D. So when you open it, it'll look like this with OX3D. This is the I squared C bus address. So when you're shooting bits over these two wires, uh, things on the other side, you're going to address the message that you're sending to OX3D. This uh, hardware module expects OX3C. So go ahead and change it. It actually expects OX78, but we'll talk about that in a minute. So go ahead and switch that, switch the header and uh, you can program it and upload it and this is what's running right here i'll reset it for you as you can see it takes up this example program takes up 70 percent of the storage space 77 percent dynamic memory uh, a lot of that is the code that's doing what you see before you're drawing the lines and all that stuff so it's it's not uh 
it's not ideal for an Arduino Nano or something like that. You may need to um, use a bigger uh, Arduino device if you want to use this library. It's very nice. You can see it's doing rounded boxes, uh, triangles. It's very easy to draw shapes with it. You can see the source code is, you know, fill circle, round rec, uh, all this. Stuff. Well, that's their function, but look at the library functions itself. Uh, draw char, draw circle. It's very easy display, draw circle, width, height, color. Obviously, this is monochrome display, so everything's going to be white. Again, even though it's showing up as yellow and blue. That's uh, baked into this display. Uh, interesting thing about this uh, library is, uh, again, it's split up into two parts. So this Adafruit SSD136 is actually a subclass of their basic GFX. The basic GFX has all the draw line, draw circle, whatever. And then this subclass has the more interesting bits that are related to um, uh, related to the actual hardware itself, sending the commands, uh, this draw pixel command, wait, where's begin? I'll show you begin. So the begin has, um, if you've previously set it up with uh, SPI mode, it can talk over the SPI bus as well, this library. So if you've previously set it up for the SPI mode, it's gonna execute these commands, uh, else it's gonna execute these commands for the I squared C bus, wire begin, all that good stuff. Other commands that this has that I haven't seen in another library is the scroll. I don't know if you're seeing it down here. Eventually they'll have some words scroll by. And this is a hardware feature of the SSD 1306. And that, so they're sending the special commands that uh, will scroll whatever's in the buffer left and right, up and down. I don't know if you can scroll more than what's displayed, such as like a ticker where words are coming off the side, or if it's only scrolling uh, a complete word, almost like Pong going back and forth between the edges. I'm not sure which. So that's the Adafruit library, very full featured, but a little bit large. If you're looking for something smaller, uh, there is the acrobotic uh, driver library. And I don't think I have that one open. Examples, acrobotic, brightness control. Now this example is a little weird. I didn't have to change the I squared C bus or anything like that. Uh, I did have to change, there's something strange. This progmem, I think the way they changed how uh, progmem works in uh, Arduino has changed uh, in the latest IDE. So just delete that prog mem in this example. Coming down here, I'm doing the brightness control. They actually have brightness with a capital B. A little strange, I'll probably go meta bug or whatever. So I'm, I'm gonna upload this one right now. And uh, it's very hard to see the brightness changing, even in real life. You know, this this camera is really, really not good. This thing is, is crisp and uh, bright and stunning in real life. It, it's hard. For that to come across because um, these are all emitting light and the camera's not very good but this is very crisp in, in, in real life uh, it's very hard to see but this is cycling through a number down here between 0 and 255 and it's updating the brightness you can only make out about four distinct levels of brightness uh, in the real world you probably only make out one on this video, if that. But this library has brightness control. It doesn't have anything else. It doesn't have um, circles or squares or any other primitives. Just draw text, uh, set the cursor position, and draw a bitmap. So if you're looking to just uh, throw out error messages or log stuff, maybe you have an Arduino in place in your garden and you, you can't take a laptop out there and keep plugging it into the USB port to read what's going on, this is a nice uh, way to sort of print the status of things. Third library I want to talk about is the uh, Tynosaur project, tynosaur.org. This 
I couldn't get this to work on my Nano. I'm not sure if it's because I have a Nano or what. Um, this is, I think, a little bit distinct from from Arduino. It, they talk about AT Tiny, and I'm not sure. I'm not really familiar with that. But they do have a library for uh, the SSD1306. It is not available in the Arduino. It's its own. You download it. It's it's very. Um, it has a make file. It's very command line oriented. Um, I had to upload it with AVR Dude and and weird things like that. Now I I tried to change this. I think my my Nano is running at 16 megahertz. I tried to change this, but it, it just doesn't work. Um, it errors out if you choose anything between. Uh, other than one or eight, I tried commenting this out. It still doesn't work. See, I put this thing around here. I put the uh, comments around this error. It still didn't work. I've changed the um, I squared C addresses. I put A4 and A5. I changed this. All this stuff still not working. Um, so that doesn't work now. I may get it to work if I mess around a little bit more. It may be just because I don't have an AT Tiny. Last library I want to talk about is called uh, U8X8. Very strange name. It's also available in the uh, sort of the Arduino Manage Libraries. So we go to Sketch, Include Library, Manage Libraries. And uh, this always takes forever to load up. I don't even know why I did it. U8, just type in U8. So there's there's U8 Glib and then there's U8 G2. This is the sort of the newer restructuring of the library. It works with all these display controllers you see listed here. Uh, it is powerful like the Adafruit library in that it has graphics primitives and stuff like that. Let me upload this graphics test. Uh, the the uh, interesting thing here is that they give you all the con all the um, you don't have to go in and change any H files or set your uh, I squared C address. They just give you every single, um, what do you call them, uh, constructor available right here in the sample. So you just find what you're doing. Now, I have a 128 by 64 no name software, I squared C. Now, there's two of these uh, SSD 1306. There's two of them. One has pins 1311, one has pins SCL and SDA. I know that. I've set my board type to a nano, so these pins SCL and SDA are defined as A4 and A5 respectively. Maybe you can't see that. This over here. So this is uh, got A4 and A5. I didn't pick the 13 and 11 one. It also doesn't have a reset pin, so there's this constant pin none, which is special. So it's a different way of doing it. Instead of having to go in, like in the Adafruit library, there's all these options. But there's no sane defaults. They can't assume that I have a 128 by 32 because I might have a 64. So this is a different way of doing it where they just say, here's all the options. You pick one and you're picking the options with a specific uh, constructor function. Sort of interesting. Now this is done uploading and you can see here's this little graphic test. Again, it looks really crisp and bright in real life. It looks all blurry on this video. Um, so it's drawn squares. Now, again, this is a feature of this one model. This model comes in just white, but it's got the yellow on top, then it has a one pixel break, and then the rest blue. I believe that one pixel break is not drawable. If you saw that that um, time moving up, it had it was 230, it was 2 colon 30, and when it hit that black line, it sort of blanked out. So I, I feel like maybe I'm missing a line. It's not just a separation. Uh, between the yellow and blue but if you bought this for the purpose of making a display on top it, it shouldn't be a big deal you just design around it so again this is the u8 g2 library and uh has graphics primitives it seems to take up about as much space or more as the uh adafruit library but just depends on what you're doing this one has a has a whole Unicode font, and I'm not sure about the the Adafruit one, if that has a Unicode or not. So there you have it. You have four libraries to communicate with your 
SD1306. I suggest you go get one and try it out for your project, whether you're trying to make a unique interface or you're just trying to read debug messages easier. Uh, it's a great buy. So that's all for now. One thing I forgot to mention about the UAG2 library is that uh, remember in the Adafruit library where I said if you didn't buy from them, you had to change this address from OX3D to OX3C if you got it from DIY Mall. Well, I was wondering how did people figure this out? Where does this number come from? Why are they different? And I, how come I don't have to do it for any of the other libraries? I didn't have to set this flag for um, UAG2. So I went poking around in the UAG2 source and I find this line that is... Uh, I squared C write byte OX78, write the slave address. And if we go back to the Amazon and we zoom in, it's easier than trying to focus my camera. We see it's printed right on there, address OX78. Now, 7A and 78, I don't know what the difference is, but it's printed right on there. And I was always wondering, where did people get this 3C from? So. If it's up to me, the U8G2 library makes more sense. Uh, if I had to poke around and figure something out, I would feel much more comfortable doing this because this makes sense to me. The 3C and 3D does not. I don't know where that number comes from. I don't know why 3C works. I've tried putting 7A and 7A in the Adafruit library and it doesn't work. So just thought I'd like to point that out. <laughs>